guys, we're out today with the TC Impact SB muzzle loader. It's a 50 caliber and it is black powder. We're using Pyrodex today, but this is a great little black powder rifle. I have never had any experience with black powder. Robbie Wheaton has had a lot of experience, and so Robbie's from Wheaton Arms, and uh, he's going to go through and help us to where if you buy this rifle, you can go through, know how to actually set it up and shoot it for the first time. You know, there's there's a lot of things with black powder that I found people are scared and intimidated by black powder to, and they really they're really intimidated by it because it's it's kind of like reloading. You know, they're like, I've never done it before. I'm afraid I'm gonna blow myself up. I really don't wanna don't wanna do it without someone showing me the proper way to do it. So that's kind of what we wanted to do today was get the TC out here to the range and walk you through the proper steps, the proper way to, to load it and prepare the firearm for the first time that you shoot it and then shooting it and the subsequent steps that you do following the, the first time you shoot it. All right, guys, what I did was originally is went through the owner's manual and found a lot of stuff that they talked about as far as what to get. So I went up to Cabela's. I got everything I needed. And what Robbie's going to do is go through and show you a lot of the details of what we have here and why. You can get your black powder a couple of different ways. You can get the black powder uh, in the pellet form like this, or you can get it as loose powder. Uh, the pellet form is just a lot easier to use and a lot easier to load in your firearm. So I really prefer and, and recommend that, recommend the pellets over the other uh, loose powder. So you can see here, we've got this pipe cleaner that comes with the Pyrodex pellets. You use the pipe cleaner to pick your pellets up, you don't use your fingers. Uh, the oils on your skin can actually uh, cause the Pyrodex pellets to become inert, uh, so they won't fire. So you use your pipe cleaner to pick up your pellets, like so. Each one of these is 50 grains, so we've got 100 grains of powder. And with 100 grains of powder, uh, that's really all that I ever use in my muzzle loader. Some people will use 150 and the muzzle loader is rated up to 150 grains of Pyrodex. I don't use 150 grains just because it's it kicks a lot. It's a lot of extra recoil, and for the distances that I shoot a muzzle loader, it, it's just not applicable for me. So I only use two. Uh, down here we've got our 209 shot shell primers. So these are just a standard shotgun primer that you use in your shotguns, and this muzzle loader uses these same type of primers. They're uh, a little difficult to get out of the tray here with your hands, but you can see what they look like. TC also makes a 209 primer insertion tool uh, that picks the primers up out of here. You use it to insert them in the breech and you can use them to take the, the spent ones out of the breech. Uh, and that's a tool that I definitely recommend getting would be the uh, 209 shot shell primer tool. We're using uh, Sabot slugs for the muzzle loader. We've got a couple of different types here. Uh, both of them, are, this one's made from uh, by Traditions. These are from Hornady. The ones from Traditions, as you can see, they've got the little plastic Sabot it's a three prong, those pull apart. This is one that I've assembled. We've got the slug down inside it. So all you do is put your slug inside like this and this entire assembly pushes into the barrel. So on the back side, there's a little cup. The little cup will, when you fire it, this will expand and seal in the bore and all of this pushes out the barrel as an assembly. Once this exits the muzzle, the little plastic sheathing will fall away from the projectile and the projectile will continue on downrange, really similar to a shotgun slug. So, and then we've got the, the nicer, the Hornady, uh, some of their ballistic tip slugs, they're a, uh, they're a Sabot as well. So very similar, just a, just a little copper jacketed slug that, that works real, real well. And there are a number of different ones that you can get. There are, yeah. And you, you've got other options that we don't have on the table here. There's, uh, you can get patched uh, projectiles, which you'll use a, a patch with some bore butter that goes in the barrel and the patch actually seals the projectile. Very similarly to the Sabot, the patch will go around the projectile and go down the bore and the cloth patch is what actually seals the uh, projectile in the bore. So I like using the Sabots a lot better, a lot more, just because they're they're simple, they're easy, they're clean. And this would be more for hunting. And this one even says sighting in. Yep. Yeah, these are target practice or hunting, either one with the lead ones. Um, these are, because of the cost, you know, you're probably not gonna wanna go out to the range and just target practice with the uh, with these a whole lot. They're, they're gonna be primarily used for hunting. The projectiles themselves, so this is a 50 caliber muzzle loader. This projectile is a 45 caliber projectile. And then the plastic expands out and fills the muzzle up to the 50 caliber diameter. 
All right, what we're going to do is go through the loading process from step one all the way out. The next thing that we're going to do once we verify there's no primer in it is we're going to check and make sure there's no projectile, no powder, or any type of obstruction in the bore. And then we've got our extension that screws on the cleaning rod. We're going to slide this down the bore. Mark it off with our finger and then lay this back on the side. And we can see the plug comes all the way to the end where our breech plug is. So we know that the muzzle loader is unloaded and there's no powder or projectile or bore obstruction in the barrel of the muzzle loader. Because one of the big things you want to make sure of is that you never leave this cleaning rod in the bore during any part of the loading process. The next thing we're going to want to do is snap a couple of primers to make sure that our flash hole is clear, make sure there's no grease or oil or anything in it that can cause the, uh, that could cause a misfire. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll pull our wings back on the side and it opens up. You can see here how that slides in and out. That just locks over. So we just pull that back and it tips open. Next, we'll take our shotgun primer and that goes into the breech right here. We'll close our breech, cock the hammer. Open the breech. We've got our fired primer. We'll extract that. Then we'll do the same thing again. I usually like to do this at least a couple of times just to make sure that it's clear. We'll give it a minute just in case there's any kind of hot coals or hot ashes in the barrel. We'll give it a minute for those to cool and uh, that way we're not putting our gunpowder in on top of hot coals. Okay, so one thing we're going to do right quick is we're going to check our, we're going to pull our breech plug and we're going to check our flash hole to make sure that it's clear. And that tool is also included uh, with the set. That's right, that tool does right. come with it. There's a little bitty tiny hole inside of the breech plug. It's got an O-ring on it that helps to seal the breech plug up and the breech plug has some grease on it uh, to help, from, help the breech plug from seizing. So we just want to pull it out and look through it make sure that there's daylight through the breech plug and there is so we'll just reinstall that back in our rifle how tight do you like to get that just hand tight yeah I, I run it in by, with my fingers and then i'll take the tool and just snug it slightly so it's it's tight enough that i can undo it with my fingers but not so tight that i end up breaking the tool trying to take it off so just a little snug is all that it needs once again, we're going to check, make sure we don't have a primer in it. As you can see, there's no primer. The reason for that is when we set our muzzle loader down to load it, the muzzle is going to be pointing up at our face. So we don't want anything in there that could potentially set this rifle off while we're loading it. So we're going to take our powder, two Pirate X pellets. They're 50 grains each for a total of 100 grains. The first inch or so of the muzzle doesn't have any rifling in it, which makes it really easy for inserting this and installing it to load it. So you can see it just drops right in. Next, we'll take our cleaning rod. Let's get our projectile started. And now we'll put our extension on our cleaning rod, or on our ramrod not cleaning rod and now we're ready to actually drive the projectile down okay. and that pops out as a t-handle it does yep the top here pops out as a t-handle which makes it gives you a little more leverage and doesn't wear your hand out when you're driving the projectile in now one of the things i know uh, is that you got to make sure that the bullet and the powder are all the way against the breech plug right? that's correct yeah if you leave if you leave a space with your projectile up here and your powder down here and you leave an air gap in between, that is the same as, as a bore obstruction. 
uh, say having a double loaded projectile or anything in the gun it's just like having a bore obstruction and it can cause your your muzzle loader to explode or blow up in your face because there's that huge gap in between there it builds up a lot of pressure and you'll you'll end up with a with a big kaboom so you always want to make sure that your projectile is seated against your powder now one thing that i read was that you need to mark it's really good to mark your ramrod that's right and this one does have a mark on it it does right? already have a mark on it correct but it's a little bit difficult to see in a sense let me see where is that there it is right there so we know we're good yep it's a, actually right a little there. low with that mark we're yep. seeing the mark so what i want to do is i'm actually going to scribe that a little deeper just so i can see it but mm -hmm. it is there uh, and it can vary just a little bit if you're using different projectiles the lead projectile versus the uh the copper jacketed projectile from hornady that can vary your your depth just a little bit so what you may want to do is scribe it one for for uh the lead one if you're going to be shooting a lot of those and then with the hornady you scribe it again for that one and you put a little mark on there to identify which mark is which right here you can see the difference between the lead and the hornady i mean it is definitely considerably a little bit larger we remove our ramrod because once again we don't want any bore obstruction that could cause our firearm to explode. So the ramrod's removed, stored back under the barrel, and then we have our ramrod extension, which you'll store wherever you normally keep that. Now, you had mentioned something that TC actually has a, a piece that fits to that that gets your starter. They do. They make a T-handle that goes on this, and then they also make a dedicated T-handle that's used for, for starting projectiles. Okay, so now for the last step, we've got our powder in, our projectile in. Now it's time to insert our 209 shotgun primer for real this time. There's our primer in. Closed. Now all we have to do is cock the hammer, and we're ready to fire. Now we're gonna take our primer out. There's our spent primer. We'll let it sit for a few minutes. Let the, uh, make sure there's no hot ash or anything in the barrel. We'll reload it and then we'll be ready to shoot it again. This really slows things down a lot, but I really like that. Sometimes we shoot too fast. All right. Man, those sights are incredible. Those fiber optic sights. Yeah, I'd have to say that's about like shooting maybe a 12 gauge, but I wouldn't say that it was even buckshot. I might say it was just some high velocity loads. Yeah. But that's, uh, that's not bad. <laughs> what do you think about recoil? It's like somebody kicking me in the shoulder. <laughs> All right, guys, and I really appreciate Robbie for coming out and getting us through it step by step. Uh, really, it's not that big a deal. No, it's not. No. It's really, once you've had someone show you how to do it, it's pretty straightforward and simple. Just like reloading, you know? Right. There's always this, this mystique behind it, you know, and people are scared to do it the first time. But once you've been shown the proper way to do it, it's super, super easy. Really easy to do. 
And, you know, like I said, the recoil is probably a, maybe a, about buckshot, maybe a little bit less, I would say. It's going to be dependent on the projectile weight. A lighter projectile is going to have less recoil, where a heavier projectile is going to have a little more recoil uh, with the same given powder charge. So that's always something to consider when you're buying your projectiles. You might want something that is a little lighter, a little softer, a little faster, or something a little heavier, a little slower, a little more recoil. Um, just depending on your hunting conditions. If you're out in a field hunting, uh, where you're gonna reach out further, or whether you're hunting in the brush or the woods where it's a little thicker and you need, need or want a little heavier projectile. So guys, if you've never shot black powder or Pyrodex or muzzle loaders, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Just adds another level to your knowledge on guns. And uh, check out wheatandarms.com. Really appreciate Robbie again for coming out. Uh, Robbie does a lot of Glock aftermarket parts. Check it out. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. some knowledge on on, a, on this product on this product on <laughs> this this product, product. <laughs> <laughs>